I made up my mind. I don't want to go to hell. I don't care what nobody do. My children got to decide where they want to live for God, but I don't want to go to hell. I just don't want to go. I don't live too hard in this life to go to hell. And I sure ain't going to go sitting in church. If I'm going to go, I'm going to go in a blaze of glory. I'm going to go out with all the drugs and, and whores around me as I can find if I'm going out. No need in being celibate and, and not high. If I'm going, I might as well just enjoy it. But I sure ain't going to sneak in hell. <laughs> Y'all know we got Christians. You know we got saints. They sneaking in hell. They sneaking around sinning like they, but they just sneaking in hell. You might as well just go, go in hell boldly. I'm here. I have arrived. Let's get it on. You might as well go. When them demons start twisting you and turning you apart into pieces, you might as well go and go, go with power. Enjoy yourself. Are you there? No, Luke. Luke chapter 16. Let me show you something about Luke, Luke chapter 16. Amen. Don't want to go to hell. Amen. I don't want to go to hell. I really, I, I'm serious. I, I, think, I think if you study it, you won't want to go. But see, the reason why people don't care because they ain't studied it. They, they, they think Tupac and them down there smoking weed or some ghetto mansions or something. Down. Ain't nothing down there. But demons twisting you up. <laughs> ain't nothing. I got videos for y'all. I can show y'all some stuff make you really live right all the way. But people are going to do what they want to do because even, even if, it, 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 well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. See, this generation don't know how to fight. Say, fight for holiness. Fight for holiness. Amen. That's really the message. Fight for holiness. Amen. Fight to live right. I know we used to think holiness was, was long dresses, and, and those were some of the most evilest women I ever met in my life. Those holiness women with the bun in their head and long dress, they were the most evilest women, the longest tongue to rip you apart, just look at you. You couldn't even get saved there. They look at you when you come to church like daggers flying at you. You'd be like, man, I might as well get on out of here because they show you ain't, I ain't sanctified. I ain't come in sanctified. Have to come in sanctified. You can't, you can't come in messed up because you ain't sanctified enough to get saved. That's not the holiness we're talking about. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking about a minute by minute relationship with Jesus. Fight to live right. Say fight to live right. In a culture that's permissive and says everything's okay, you got to fight to live right. Say amen. That's one of the reasons I taught my kids the way I did. I don't care what other people do. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to do it. I don't care if it's the normal. I don't care if boyfriend, girlfriend, the normal. I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. You're going to either do it my way or you're going to get on out there. Get on and enjoy it. Pay for your, pay for your sin. I ain't going to sit up here and pay for your sin. I ain't paying for your roof over your head for you to go sin. If you want to go sin, pay for your sin. Get on out there and enjoy it. Get deep. But you're going to pay for your sin. I ain't going to be up in there saying to your sin, you eat good food. and everything. No, 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 no. I want you to feel, I want you to get the pig pen effect. Sin costs, you know, you, y'all want to talk. Y'all, some of y'all, what's wrong with y'all kids? You ain't giving them the pig, you won't give them the pig pen effect. Let them know you're going to do wrong, go all the way. Don't tip your toe around this. Go on, on go on all the way out there. Enjoy your life. Pig pen going to get you. You'll call me from jail somewhere. Pig pen got you. And then you'll remember, oh, it was so good when I was at home. Yeah, it was good. Well, you want, you want to come back in your right mind? Let's go here. Look at this. I was at uh, verse, verse 19. This is what I want to show y'all. Say fight. fight. There was a certain man, there was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fur sumptuously every day. Amen. Ain't that what we're trying to do? We want to live sumptuously every day. That's the rapper, that's the videos, that's all the MTV cribs, that's the NBA players. Everything we see in our culture is trying to fare sumptuously every day. We got to have new every day, got to look good every day. Say amen. amen. That's the, what the culture is teaching us, that we become so material, that we, that we forget about the eternal. Yeah. We're too material, amen. Yeah. We're so wanting to pop collars and tags or whatever you want to call it, that we, that, that we forget about the eternal, that your soul got to go somewhere. Once, once you get done popping your collars, your soul got to go somewhere. Say amen. amen. Look at this. It says there was, a, there was a certain man, and, you know, he was a rich man, and, and he, and he first summed this every day. Fine, fine linen is a good word. That means fine linen is back then was good. 
he was dressing in the highest of highest, amen? And there was a certain man that was named Lazarus, which laid at the gate full of sores and designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, that's, that's what I want to show you that, um, you know, the, 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 the problem with the rich man uh, is the problem with our generation. Is they, they, they have never been taught that death going to win. They've never been taught that no matter what you do, you're going to die. And, and because Satan, uh, matter of fact, Satan's clause us to this generation is called YOLO. You only live once. And it makes a person think about doing everything they can do and live as big and hard as they can because that phrase is keeping them from, from understanding the, 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 the end of life. They're only thinking about living. But they don't realize that once you, your body hits this ground, then you have a reward. Say a reward. And the reward is based upon what you did with your body. What you, say, what, say what you did with your body. God's not going to judge you based on uh, 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 other people. He's going to based on what you did with your body. The Bible says that man going to have to give an account for what he did in this body. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, 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 so the Bible says that the, that the rich man died and the beggar died. Y'all there? Now, the preachers don't even preach this because uh, this doesn't preach well when you have a church full of sinners. Now, what, what I mean by sinners, I mean we all sinners in some way. Say amen. But I mean people who willfully decide they're going to live in sin. It doesn't preach well. Amen. Are y'all there? Say, I got to love the truth. You have to love the truth. You got to just love. You got to say, man, I don't care how hard it is. I don't care. That's the only way you'll ever change. Is when you say, you know what? If I'm as guilty as guilty can be, I'm going to love this truth. Even if I'm guilty. Even if I don't feel good, I'm going to go ahead and receive the truth. That's what keeps you from being deceived. When you decide, I'm, I'm, I'm not all what I think I am. I'm not, I'm not as good as I think I am. Say amen. Okay, look at this. It says, now, this guy done died. And look at verse 23. And in hell, this rich man lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now, this man that lived good, the Bible says that he had his faculties. The place of hell or Sheol or Hades uh, does not cut a person off from reasoning. So it won't be like a dream. It will be real. You will be able to reason and see and hear and feel and taste. As a matter of fact, when your body, when, your, when you are in your spirit form and your body is dropped to this ground, your spirit will pick up more senses than you can pick up with this body. So you will feel more than what this body is capable of. This body is made for the earth realm. And the earth, say amen. That's why you have these senses. This body is a machine that has sensors. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These, these sensors keep you in tune with this world. You need it for this world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why you don't see demons walking around in the animated because they need a body to do it because they're they not made for this world. Say amen. Come on, talk to me. That's why they want your body. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But this body has sensors. It, it has the ability to see, touch, taste, smell. Uh, uh, um, give me some more. Hear. So, so this body is, is tunes me into this world. Now, one, now, now, now this body is not the real me. I have another body. It's called my spirit and my soul. Now, when this body, which is corruption, falls to the ground or can no longer, can no longer keep this machine running to house this spirit, that's what happens when you die. This machine stops. When the machine stops, the body has the spirit, soul has to jump out of it because it's, it's no longer able to house it. So that's what death is. Death is this machine stopping. But it's not the end. It just means that this machine can no longer house your body. Now, 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 listen, if angels don't show up for you with a robe, you're in trouble. That's a whole nother word, y'all. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. When your body hit the ground, if angels don't show up with a robe because you can't, you, you have no ability to move in the spirit without another body. That's why Jesus said, I'm going away to bring another body. 
He said this. He said this. This corruption will this this will, this corruption will put on incorruption. So he says, I'm going away to bring you another body, a glorified body, so that you can come and stand before God in His energy. God's so powerful, He burn up everything else. That's why you need a body to stand before Him. It would be like standing before the sun with no suit on. You have to have another body because in, in that dimension, hit the light of God is so strong. The Bible says when Jesus comes, he's going to, he's going to destroy Satan and his, and his followers with the brightness of his coming. With the brightness because they don't have a glorified body to stand before this, this God with all this power and energy and fire. They're going to get burnt up. But we're getting a new far suit, a new body. The Bible calls it a robe in, 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 in a, a revelation. Say, man. And we're going to put on, we're going to take off this, this corruption because this is dirt. This going to go right back to the dirt and our spirit is going to be housed. It's going to be translated. What is that a good word? The Bible says we're going to be translated. It's going to be translated into another body, a glorified body that will be able to stand in the presence of Almighty God. Now, what I'm living this life for, I'm living for the next body. I'm trying to do good in this body so I will be eligible for the next one. But the Bible says God don't judge me for how I treated this body. And if I sin and destroy this temple, then I'm going to disqualify myself for the next one. Oh, study the Bible. Are y'all understanding what? Oh, uh, let's go back. Let's go back. No, no, no. Let's go back. Because I want to show you in the word. If I can find it. Okay, we'll go to uh, uh, First Corinthians, real quick. First Corinthians, real quick, chapter fifteen. Are y'all there? First Corinthians, uh, fifteen. Look at verse uh, 53. Oh, well, no, let's look at those. This is good, this is all good scripture. Look at uh, verse 50. Y'all there? Amen. Please be there. I want you to read it. I don't want you to think I'm just making it up. You're living for the next body. That's why you wouldn't put so much stock in this body. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you, you, wouldn't, you would realize this body is just, just, a, 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 uh, 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 just a proving ground for the next body. Amen. Now, look at verse 50, 50. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do a corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Say a mystery. A mystery. That this, when it says a mystery, it means God's stuff. That means this is so deep that it's, 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 it's so beyond man that God said, I, I ain't only me trying to reveal it to you because it's something in my realm that y'all don't even have privilege of the knowledge of. If, if I even told you, the stuff that I'm talking about in this realm ain't even in, in this world, so I couldn't even give you a word to give you the understanding, so I just call it a mystery. It's my stuff. Are y'all there? He said, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. That word translated. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption, listen, for this corruption, when it says corruption, I'm at the body. Y'all there? Amen. It says, for this corruption shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. That's what it's talking about. That means this soul and spirit living this, in this corrupted body is going to put on a new body, an immortal body, and this is what Satan is going to promise people to follow him. I don't want to, do I really want to get into this? Did you know even if you, you can Google it now, I'm not even making it up, uh, Google's already saying that they have a way for people to live forever. They said like 20, I think it's 20, 30 or something like that, they, go, they said, man, it's going to be able to live forever. They already have a, the science, the, the, the way it, it has to do with gold. Gold has a regenerative property. Do you remember? It, uh, I don't even know if I want to get into this with y'all. It take me too far. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So why do you think people are going to serve? Why do you think people going to take the mark? If you don't think you're going to die, then I ain't got to worry about the judgment. This is what Satan is promising those that follow him. You'll live forever. Satan is a counterfeit. He's going to promise what God is promising. Jesus has promised you an inter eternal life. Amen. Say amen. Satan's going to promise eternal life here. Why do you, you think they love the world so much? They want to, they, 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 they want to kill you and keep the, keep the earth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Now look, look. 
let me show you. This is, this is why you need to be living right in your body. Amen. For this corruptible shall put on, in, shall, for, for this corruptible, verse 53, shall, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must, must, say must, must. put on immortality. Because remember, you can't go unless you get this immortality or this incorrupted body. So, the, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying is written, death is swallowed up in life. I mean, death is, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is that sting? Oh, grave, where is that victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Now, what he's saying is, if you don't have another body, death will reign over you at that point. When you die, listen, when you die, if angels don't show up, now you, have you ever heard people that have near-death experiences and they say, you know, they, 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 they was just traveling at high rate of speed and they saw this tunnel, they saw this light, and they were just ready to go to this light, and all of a sudden God, you know, brought them back or they, or they came back and come back into their body. Say amen. amen. Now, that's because angels came. If you die and angels don't show up based upon how you lived your life, Listen, listen to me. Let me, let me, let me give you, even, even what I said, I said, I knew it was a prophetic word when I was singing today. You remember when I said lost? I said something about, uh, I would be lost. You don't, we don't understand the, 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 the we don't understand the, the whole understanding of lost. If you, listen, if God don't come for me when I die, I'm lost. It doesn't, what that means is I'm somewhere that God can't locate me. I'm lost. Because of the way I chose to turn my back. I chose to keep going against God. Lost is a place. Y'all hear me? Lost is a place. So if I die, lost, the, the angels that are supposed to minister unto the earth of salvation... They don't come to me. So what comes to me? The spirits that tempted me and motivated me to sin against God, they grab me. Uh, nobody wants to talk now. They grab me. And hell becomes open. Hell can be open wherever you are. Wherever your feet are, hell can be open. In the spirit realm, you could go to a portal of hell quickly. The laws are different. I ain't got time to talk about that. Say amen. amen. But spirits, the spirit, that, the spirit that, that, that was in your ear saying masturbate, that's the one going to be there. The one that was telling you don't, 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 don't get saved right now. That's the spirit. That's, it was that familiar spirit's job to keep you from really getting saved. So when, so when you die, it's that demon's job to drag you. Now I got you. Drag you on to hell now. Why? You don't have a body to fight in that realm. Y'all didn't catch what I'm saying. You don't have a body. Why do you think when people die and go to hell, why come they can't fight those spirits off? Why can't? Because they don't have the right body. But a glorified body is always a body of light. That's why when lights show up, demons, demons flee. A glorified body is what, listen now, now I'm going to go deep. Y'all ready? It's what Adam had before he sinned. He put on, what did the Bible tell us? Put on, put on, no, it says put on Christ. Put on. That's the, that's the glorified nature of God. It's not necessarily a suit as much as it is the nature of God that covers all of our nakedness, all of our anything that would be shameful. Now, I, now, listen listen to me now. I draw that to me based on how I'm living in this life. Why do you think, listen to me, why do you think the Bible says if your hand offends you, cut it off. It's better to enter into heaven with one hand than to let that hand take your whole body to hell. Go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Think about your mortality. You want people, people, see, sin is, sin is pleasurable when you don't have the thought of your mortality in your mind. When you ain't thinking about dying, sin is pleasurable. You, and it, it, you know, I, you know I, I don't want to know, but, you know, ain't you ever thought about the thought of the person the second they died, the thought after they died? Yeah. Think about the thought, the next thought. Because you think about the next thought, 
what would that thought be? What would that thought be? Because most people, the, the next thought is them falling. Yeah. Falling into hell. That's what the next thought would be. Now y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I know it's unpopular teaching, but without the penalty, yeah. there's lawlessness. Amen. This is why we can live any kind of way because we have been trained through this over abuse of grace. It's abuse. You're abusing God's grace because you think, because yeah, because if you confess your sin to Him, He will forgive you. But yeah, but you can abuse that. That means if you keep doing something to me and you keep saying you're sorry, if you keep doing it, I don't want to think you're sorry after a while because you 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 plan on my goodness. Well, that's what happens when you keep trying to come to God. You willfully doing wrong, then confessing to God and you saying I'm I'm, I'm repenting. After a while, your conscience becomes seared and your confession means nothing to God. After a while. Because confession must be backed up by action. Come on, talk to me. I'm talking about one of the one of the one of the things I'm telling you is that Christians, people, the Bible says many are gonna say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Lord, did we heal the sick? Lord, didn't we do that? Many are gonna say, Lord, didn't I tithe? Didn't I go to church on Sunday? Lord, didn't I? And God gonna say, Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I don't know you. You don't have a relationship with me. You did the church thing without getting a relationship with me. Because I, the relationship with me was based upon when I was trying to tell you, don't do that. Stop that. Don't go there. Cut them off. Don't, don't look at that. Cut the TV off. Get rid of the phone. Get off the computer. That's God building a relationship because he's telling you these are the things that's keeping me and you from being close. That's what's keeping me from knowing you. Oh, listen to what I'm trying to say. The Bible says, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I don't. Jesus said, I don't know you. There's something that kept me from knowing you. But the Bible says, I cannot look upon sin. So your sin is what's keeping me from knowing you. So if you don't get rid of your sin, I never knew. No matter how much you praise and say you know me. Everybody says I know the Lord. Yeah, but he said, I don't know. Are y'all there? He said, I don't know you. What a sad what a sad word to hear from God. Amen. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. And that's why at the time people going to say, but Lord, remember me? Lord, me, me I was, uh, uh. He said, no, no, no. I was trying to build a relationship. But my relationship was based on, I was trying to get the things out of your life that was in between me and you. Remember you kept choosing a man over me? You don't remember I kept telling you, leave that alone? And you said, no, I just got to have this. Okay, that's, that, that's what kept me from knowing you. Remember you was chasing money? You was chasing your own will all your life? You kept chasing what you wanted? That kept me from knowing you. Remember I told you to forgive people? I told you to forgive. If you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. Your unforgiveness kept me from knowing you. So it don't matter how much, and this is a bad generation that says it all the time, I know the Lord. Don't matter. It don't matter. He has to know you. So if I was you, I would be doing everything to try to get him to know me or to notice me. That's what worship is. Notice me. I'm trying to get your attention, master. That's why it says those that wait upon the Lord spend time Waiting on God. Waiting for him to come to know me. Nobody wants to talk no more about this stuff. Are y'all there or not there? See, see, I'm afraid that that, that, that's going, that day is going to catch off. Now, it's, it's got to catch people off guard because why would Jesus write that? That was Jesus' word that said many going to say, Lord, Lord. Why would he say that? Because it's must going to be a lot of people that going to think that they saved. They were doing the works of God. They, what they say? Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out devils? Man, that seemed to be working. You working for the Lord. Did not we heal the sick? He, they, they, in, they in the house of God. But he says, I don't know who you are. You didn't build relationship. Are y'all there? My wife, she knows me, right? I know her. What would stop her from knowing me and me knowing her is, the, is, is if we have secrets. 
Our secrets will stop us from knowing each other. That will be a boundary, right? So no matter if, so we could be together for 25 years, but not really know each other because we still got secrets. Just because we were together, does that mean we know each other? That's what it means when you're going to church. Just because you go to see God. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. Y'all don't want to hear this for this generation. You can go to see God, but, do, but, but you can have stuff in between you and God, and y'all and don't have no real strong relationship. Ain't that something? That's why I say, Lord, I want you to know me. I have to do enough so you can know me. Are y'all there? That's why I worship the way I... Some of y'all don't understand. I, don't, I, I ain't no saying I don't worship for no show. I worship God because I'm trying my best to get him to hear me every time. I don't care what you heard. I want him to hear me. Because I want to spend, I want to make sure that I gave it my best effort. God, I tried to, to get to you this morning. I, everything I say ain't getting to God. You are lying if you think everything you say getting to God. Everything don't get to God. You don't believe me. The Bible says that if you don't treat your wife right, your prayers will be hindered. So that means that you can be praying all you want to, man. If you don't do what God said, you, you ain't, he ain't going to hear your prayer. Everything don't get to God. Another script said that, 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 if you, that if you regard iniquity in your heart, God don't hear you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So every time I'm worshiping and praying, praising, I'm trying to get to God. Some of y'all think, oh, he's taking so long. I'm trying to get to God. I don't care how you feel because I'm saying if we don't get God in here, I'm going to stand up and hurt your feelings. Because I'm going to preach in my flesh. But if I can get to God, I may still hurt your feelings, but it'll be a God cut. God cut comes with solution. Man's cut just leave you leaking. Man leave you leaking. God will have a solution. Uh, let me move on. Y'all there. Let me show y'all something. I'm talking about that glorified body. The Lord changed his message. I thank him for it. Look at this. Uh, verse 14 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. You there? It says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brothers, concerning them which are asleep. Talking about those that have died. Christians who have died. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if ye believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will, will God will bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with a voice of an archangel angel, and, the, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him, to, to meet the Lord in the earth. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, people are amazed at this scripture because they don't understand how it's going to happen. Let me, let me give you one more scripture before I, then I tie it in and I'm closed. He was chapter 4 and 12. Now I'm going to show you something why it's important to understand that you are going to have a new body. Say a new body. Now the goal for, the, why, why do we study? Why do we read the word? We study the word because the word of God is the only thing that can separate me from this body I have. I'm not talking about death. I'm talking about why I'm living. Because you do know it's your flesh that causes you to do the most of your sinning. It's your flesh that speaks. Your flesh has a voice of its own. If you don't believe me, just don't eat for about two days and your flesh will be talking all loud. Your stomach will speak to you quick. Say amen. Your body is the one that talks about sex. Your, your mind don't really, unless your mind is perverted through pornography or something, but usually it's your body that gives you the urge. Your body has the urge in it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The word of God is the only thing that can separate those urges. Separate your spirit and soul from the urges of the flesh. Oh, y'all ain't catching what I'm trying to say. See, you'll never stop lusting and stop being overly tempted if you don't have the word dwelling richly in you. Because it's the word of God that, is, that has the ability to separate me from this body. Now, it's very important that I'm separated from this body because I don't want the Lord to come and see me as this dirty body. Y'all don't, uh, you uh. Come on, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. I want to be able to drop this body because it ain't mine anyway. 
This body ain't mine. This body is the earth's. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to be able to jump out of this body. I don't want nothing holding me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But if I, if I love something this body does, then my soul and my, which is my mind, will, and emotions is going to be tied, so tied to the flesh. Oh, y'all don't catch what I'm saying. I'm going to be so tied to my body. So when it's time for me to leave this body, my soul going to want to stay. The word of God is what causes me to let this body go. That's why you can't live for God unless the word is dwelling in you because you will never let the body go. Every time the body say do, you'll do. Every time the body say go, you'll go. When the body say I want some sex, you'll have it. When the body say I want to eat, you'll do it. You'll never fast because the body will always tell you to, not to fast. You got to learn that the word will make you let the body go. Say man, I want to live a life of denying the body. The Bible says if any man will follow me, he must first deny himself. You got to learn to deny this body. Say man, Because I live a life of denying the body, ain't going to be no big deal with me to let this thing go. How many people is going to, that's why it's going to be a big problem for people. How you going to live, how you going to die for God <laughs> if you have to lay the body down? That's time you got to lay this body. That mean, you may come a time you got to lay it down. Amen. I was just watching somewhere a, a, a Muslim kicked the Christian door in because they're they doing this overseas. We just don't know. But they're doing it overseas uh, uh, where uh, he asked the Christian man, well, are you a Christian? And the Muslims and the Christian man said, yeah. And he said, why? He said, because my God's a real God. He said, so you ready to die for your, for, as a Christian? The man said, Yeah. He shot him. He shot him in the head, with it, but the man just didn't die. But that's what Muslims are doing to Christians, and they ain't reporting it over here. Talking about a religion of peace, please. They are killing Christians. They, Christians are becoming martyrs overseas all the time. It's coming to America. They're using the homosexual movement to do it. They're persecuting Christians out of all. Y'all don't want to talk about this. They don't care about you. They don't care about the average person. It's the Christian they don't, they don't like. If it, if, if it wasn't after the Christians, what they want the church for? Amen. Why they want to come church for? And go get your own church. Get, get your own. Y'all can be naked. Enjoy yourself. Amen. Go on church, have a ball. It's just be called a church of bell. Amen. Why y'all want our church? Why y'all want us to accept it? Amen. They marching against the church. Say amen. Y'all don't see it because y'all just think it's about doing her and it's about clothes. It's about they marching against the church and they're and they going to get hostile when it comes to them not getting denied their rights. And uh, that's why they're going to pass laws that against Christians it's going to become illegal for you to discriminate. Discrimination just means silence. You're going to be silent. You ain't going to be able to say nothing. How you going to live for God then? How you going to live for him then? You can't open your mouth now. Are you going to get, you gonna get courage all of a sudden? No, you're going to have courage if you've already denied this body. you already saying, man, what, what you going to do to me? I'm already, I'm already no, y'all don't want to talk about this. See, when I'm talking about fighting, that's what I mean. We got the, we're going to have to go back to real old time Christian carriage. Where you just got some carriage. Where, okay, well, if it means I got to lose this, whatever I'm gaining, then I'll lose it for God. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now, the way I'm telling you, you have to learn how to live this life. And I'm not talking about just, you know, if it comes down, down to, 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 to fighting people over your own life. I'm talking about how you have to fight this body of sin. Amen. The Bible says, when I would do good, evil is always present. Paul said, who will deliver me from this body? So there's something about this body that we have to fight. Say amen. amen. Now what I'm trying to show you is the word of God is the only thing that can separate you from this body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You keep on falling because you ain't got enough word to stand. The body needs to hear the word of God. The body has to hear the word of God. You speak to the word, the body like you're talking to somebody. Dude, the Bible says flee fornication. Talk to your body. You talk to it. The Bible says I'm supposed to fast, body. The Bible tells me bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I'm using a word on my body. I can't fight my body with just my own willpower. That's why you can't stop doing what you're doing. You're not going to stop till the word of God reigns in your body. I said the word got to reign in your body. How you going to watch 16 hours of TV and go to sleep and think you're going to get victory? You can't watch pornography and think you're going to have your right mind. You're losing your mind. 
The word of God is what brings you back to your right mind. I'm preaching this way because I'm trying to, it's hard when you, because we got a pitiful Christian experience where you're trying to tell them you're never going to live for God. You're never going to be delivered unless you get the word and put it inside of you deeply. You read the word, you meditate on it day and night. Oh, God help me. Let me come back. I'm going to come back. Remember Hebrews 4 and 12. Let me say this real quick and I'm done. Psalm 1. Come on. Psalm 1. Quick, 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 quick. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. The body has to be, Paul called it buffered. Buffered it. Buffered me. Beat it down. Beat it down. Quit, quit giving it everything it asks for. Beat it down. Beat it down. You got to tell your body no. We ain't looking at that. I see the big booty out of the corner. I ain't looking. No. Eyes, no. You ain't going to never get over lust unless, unless you just you control. So I'm talking to your body. Look at verse 1. Look at verse 1, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walk not in counsel of God. I could just destroy this whole scripture. That's not what I want. Counsel of my ungodly. That's why some of y'all can't live right. You always walk when people ain't live right. No city, no standing in the way of sinners. How you? Oh, I, I'm going on. No city in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law do he meditate day and night. In his law he meditates day and night. Amen. Listen. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth fruit in his season. And his leaves shall not wither. Whatever he shall do shall prosper. The word of God dwells so richly in a person that they, con they walk in continual breakthrough and harvest just by having the word in them. Y'all don't want to talk about this. The word Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The word Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The word Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Night and day you got to have it in your body. Night and day you got to meditate on it. Nobody's going to do your reading and your praying for you. You got to have this word inside of you. Oh... If you don't get this word in you, you're looking for a psychologist to hear your problems with no solution. The pill is the word of God. That's your greatest prescription. Take it every day. Are y'all there? Go back to Hebrews real quick. Go back to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I said the word has to separate. Now, now first you got to meditate on it. This is the fight I'm talking about fighting. This is the fight we're talking about. I ain't sit up fighting no thoughts. I'm just going to keep these thoughts keep running my mind. Now let me get this word out. Let me still put this word on these thoughts. The word is what destroys and separates these thoughts from me. The word is, oh, y'all don't hear me. The word is what silences my flesh. The word of God will silence your flesh. Your flesh be hot. The word will silence your flesh. You cannot, you cannot beat your flesh uh, 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 in your mind. The flesh, is, the flesh is stronger than you. It has too many receptors. <laughs> it has too many points of feeling. Your flesh can go off at any time. Look at this. Verse 12. For the word of God is quick. The word of God is quick and powerful. Quick means alive. The word quick means alive. That means it's not a novel. It's not, a, it's not just a book. That means when I read it, it's life in it. Powerful means it can overcome whatever. Sharper than, it's what I'm going to show you. Sharper than any two as one person, even to divide in the son of soul and spirit. In other words, the word of God is what can get in there and divide. It, it, it can slice between things that are profitable and things that are not. Stuff I need and stuff I don't need. It can circumcise me without me knowing. The word of God is what gives me that ability. Say amen. I ain't talking about no bunch of gospel songs, no bunch of ungodly gospel artists. Listen to a bunch of f silly gospel music. Walk around with praise. That ain't going to do nothing for you. The word. If they ain't singing about the blood or the cross, just turn it off. They ain't singing about overcoming and victory. Turn it off. I don't want to hear no songs about we fall down and, and I'm not barely making it. And I'm barely dragging in God. And I don't know how long I'm going to stand. I don't want that. That's, that's defeat. I want to hear, I, I hear my God is overcoming God. God has given me power to stand. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Y'all heard what I'm saying. I want to hear no bunch of weak little, little halfway in the world satanic gospel songs. That stuff just lullabies you Christians to sleep. Nothing but club music. 
That don't give you no message. That ain't feeding your spirit. Them beats ain't doing nothing but putting you in the mind of sin. You need to get out of that and start getting some blood songs. Go back to the old hymns. Get that word out. Y'all heard what I'm saying. Listen, the Bible, I told you, the word is what do it. Listen, the Bible, the Bible says the word it is, a, is, a, is, a, is, is, is divided the soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. Listen, the word gets down in, in my, listen, the word can get down in my, in my system, in my joints. That's where your healing come from. The word get down in your joint and bring healing. It'll get down in your, uh, the word, listen, y'all, Satan can't occupy where the word's at. If you put the word in you, he can't occupy you with sickness. He's occupied you because ain't no word there. No, y'all. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? People sick because you, you ask them, how much studying do you do? They don't matter. They don't study the word. The word is what get down in you. Once that word get in you, sickness can't stay in you. Why? Because you have an overcoming power. It's alive. It'll drive out sickness. Say amen. The joints of the marrow, even the zone of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So, I mean, that's how sharp this word we got is. It can separate me. That's what's wrong with most of us. Some, we just need to be separated. We just need to be carved up out of word. Some stuff need to be carved out. And that's what the word of God does. This is the reason why you find the, 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 the less people do is study. They don't read the word. They don't study. I ain't talking about reading before you go to sleep. 15 minutes, your head's nodding on the bed. That ain't, you ain't going, you ain't reading no word laying in the bed. You ain't reading no word unless you get up early in the morning. Give God some devotional time. Give him the best of your day in early hours. The Bible says seek him, seek him early. Seek me early. You got to give him that early morning time. Say amen. And you get down and you meditate. And you meditate on that word. And the Bible says that's how you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's how, that's how sickness can't stick, demons can't stick to you without that word in you. The word of God is not a normal book, it's power. Say amen. And if you ever going to overcome, what, I, ain't, I ain't trying to tell you believe God for all this word stuff. You, if you get God's word, all that stuff going to come to you. The Bible says whatever you do will prosper. Whatever you do shall prosper. So if you get his word in you, all that stuff you're asking for will come based upon the word being in you. Say amen. The word is what's going to separate you when it comes time for you to let this body go. I said the word going to separate. I thank him for separating me. I thank him for separating me now. That's why you deny yourself. That's why you don't live like everybody else. Even if I don't care who do it. I don't care how well. I don't care what they say about you. You have people hate you from one side up there, uh, up the other one. But still live the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Teach it to your children. Live the word of God. Say amen. Stand on your feet. Thank you. You have to fight. Say fight. This is a season of war. Fight. You fight. You got to fight. You got to have that word to fight. That's your sword of the spirit. Fight the devil. Say fight the devil. Don't be backing up. Get your word out and fight him. And you may be somebody you ain't going through nothing now, but that's coming today, baby. You're going to need to fight. You better start sharpening your skill now. I'd rather learn to fight before I have to fight than to have to fight and don't know how to fight. You better start fighting while you ain't got to fight. What do you think this life is for? If God is going to take you to heaven, he just saved you and killed you. you. You getting ready for the big battle. The big battle, the great tribulation. You getting ready for it. That's what you're getting ready for. Now, if you, you, be, you, should, be, you should be learning to fight before you have to fight. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I don't know about you. I want to make it. I didn't come this far not to make it. Been through hell and high water not to make it. Say amen. Holding on to God with everything I got. Sometimes all you got, you feel yourself like you're the only person in the world holding on to God. But if you're the only person in the world holding on to God, you holding by yourself. If everybody leave, if mama, daddy, wife, anybody walk out, you hold on to God. If the whole church go to hell, if everybody go, go gay and go on the street, you hold on to God. If all your friends backslide and everybody go to the club, you hold on to God. I'm making it. I said I'm making it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No. Hallelujah. Whew. 
Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray today. Hallelujah. First of all, we're going to, I, I just think if, you, if, 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 if you're not all the way with God, remember I said that God need to know you. Yes. I didn't ask you, do you know God? That is a, that's a, that's a lying cliche. I'm asking you, do, are you sure God know you? Are you certain that y'all have that closeness, that relationship? Or, or when I said that, did something come up in your mind that you know is between you and God? If there's something there, you need, you, you, you're not all the way with God yet. It's time to get all the way with God and allow him to be true, no matter what's in the way. You'd be surprised what small things people will go to hell over. Small stuff. The stuff that you think ain't nothing, but that little thing's keeping them from giving God their all. I don't care who you are. I made a decision. Man, when I started this church, I, you know, you have all kind of people come in, go, people come and go, people fall away, go back to, to, to the world, do whatever they want to do. Man, we had, we had made a decision before we started passing that we're going to stand for Jesus no matter who come, who go, who don't live for God, who fall away. And, 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 and 11 years later, we're still standing for Jesus. Now that's the tenacity you're going to have to have in this last hour. I love my wife, but if she go crazy and go on somewhere, I'm, I'll be right here serving the Lord. If I do it, she'll be right here serving the Lord. My children, I'm teaching them, serve the Lord. Don't, even whatever we do, serve God. This is how you have to be. You have to have a tenacity of fighting you in this last day. Play, son. And we're going to pray. If you, if you, if, if, if when I said that, bow your head. Bow your head. If when I said that you don't know if there's something in between you and God, if you're not sure that God really know you. When I said that if a boyfriend, girlfriend jumped up in your mind, if, if some money or some illegal thing jumped up in your mind, if some sin jumped up in your mind, that's, that thing is between you and God. And if it is there, no need in lying about it because God knows. He knows. He sees it. He's, he's, he sent you here to get that thing right with him. To tell him you're going to put him on the throne and get that thing off the throne. And if you know in your heart that there is something between you and God, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're going to get married to him. I don't care. If you ain't already married to him, if it's in between you and God, it's, it, then, then that thing is in the way. God wants you to get right with him first. Let him bring whatever in your life. Let him do whatever he's going to do. You don't have to hook up none. God is good. And if, and, 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 and if, 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 if when I said that, that, that thing jumped up in your mind, that you know that if you died, God might not know you based upon what's in between you and him. It could be some sin. It could be some lust. It could be pornography. It could be masturbation. It could be some type of sin, sin that, that nobody knows about. But if it's in between you and God, then God don't know you like he want to. That's what he wants to do, to know you today. And if you want to know God, and if you want him to know you, I want you to come and we're going to pray. Don't worry about people. Come. Come and get that right with God. You're not coming to join. You're not coming to, to you ain't, ain't doing me no favors. You're getting that thing right with God. I don't want nothing in between me and you, God. Whatever it is, I don't want nothing in between. You can come down, son. Just put the camera right here. Put it right there in the middle and come down. Hallelujah. You too. Come on, come on, come on. Come down here. Anything that's not anything in between me and God, I want it out. I want it out of my life. I want to acknowledge, God, that I've had something on the throne that did not belong. And I want to acknowledge it today. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up to the Lord. This is just an earnest prayer from your heart. You know what's in there. You know what's in between you and God. And you know what you need to move out of God's place. You know what has become God to you, stuff you can't give up. You know what it is, and God's asking for that today. Give God an earnest, earnest prayer, and he will become Lord over your life and, and, and take up his rightful place. Say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent, I repent for, having for having something in your place. In your place. I, repent I repent for idolatry for having something, for having something in, your place. in your place. Lord, I ask you. Come back. Come back. Be the, of my life. Be the center of my life. Take up the throne. Take up the throne. Remove, Remove anything, anything that's, in place. that's in your place. Teach me, Teach me. Not, to not to worship what I want, what I want. But, to you. but to worship you. Jesus, Jesus. Cleanse, me cleanse me 
from all unrighteousness, all sin, every stain. Wash me clean. Renew my passion. Renew my passion for you. Lord God, help me do my first works over again. Come into my heart. Rain, 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 rain. Be Lord, 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 be Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. I want y'all to repeat this prayer. Say, Satan, I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every weapon you are using to keep me in bondage, to keep me away from God, by the power in the name of Jesus Christ, break, 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 in Jesus' name. Say, Satan, I bind you. Everything, everything, every trick, Every manipulation, every bewitchment you are using to keep me away from the Lord. Break, 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 break. You spirit of lust, you spirit of perversion, attacking me, tormenting me. You are a liar by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Break, 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 break. Break, break, break out in Jesus' name. Give the Lord some praise. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hooks are back.